Growing up as a Nintendo fanboy, you don't get a lot of experience with Sega consoles and games. But as I got older and I kind of moved away from the Nintendo stuff and kind of started trying out Sony and Sega and you know I, I ended up getting a lot more into Sega consoles, specifically the Sega Genesis. Now today what I wanted to do is kind of showcase five games that blew me away, that I was just like, whoa, like what is going on in this game? Like how did they do that? And so I'm going to be diving into some technical aspects of five different games that really impressed me for one reason or another. And so let's go ahead and get started. Silphied on the Sega CD. Being a late investor in Sega consoles, I had always assumed that Star Fox on the Super NES was the most impressive 3D visual spectacle that a 16-bit system could offer. That was long before I laid eyes on Silphied for the Sega CD. I can safely say that developer Game Arts crafted a mind-blowing experience. Here we have a top-down shooter where you control a spaceship that is part of the SA-77 Rebel Fleet, aiming to take down the evil Zakalite. Aside from a soundtrack that gets the blood pumping along with tight controls, Silphied runs pre-rendered video in the background. This causes you to see your spaceship flying over 3D polygon asteroids and ships galore. Playing this nowadays, I still look at it in the mindset of a kid, and seeing all the debris and spacecrafts flying around is truly awe-inspiring to spectate. Arcus Odyssey on the Sega Genesis. Arcus Odyssey, despite getting a release on the Super Famicom two years after the initial 1991 console debut, released in the US officially on the Sega Genesis. Here we have an action RPG with an isometric viewpoint where you can pick from four different heroes to blast your way through the land of Arcus. Your mission is laid out in one of the best intros on the console, with comic book style panels popping up left and right. But on top of the killer Motoi Sakuraba soundtrack built up in the background, there's an impressive shot involving Princess Leity and the evil sorceress Castamira. Check it out. The thing that really stands out for me is this shot right here. This is borderline mode 7 with the background rotating and scaling as the camera pulls back to show the two ladies duking it out. Since mode 7 isn't a hardware feature available to the Genesis, this shot had to most likely be done in the software itself to fake its way to imitating the Super NES feature, which is a very impressive feat. Hell, even the Super Famicom's version of the game isn't as impressive. Red Zone on the Sega Genesis. Developed in 1994 by Xerinx, Red Zone blew me away right from the beginning of the game. In the opening, we're given a boastful checklist of things that people often thought the Genesis was not capable of, such as full motion video and rotating backgrounds. And lo and behold, here we see some incredible red and black full motion video of tanks, planes, and submarines. Even as the game itself starts up, we're treated to some truly astounding visuals, complemented by Jesper Kidd's extremely underrated soundtrack. While the controls take some getting used to, it doesn't help that the game is so visually impressive, as I tend to just space out and fly my helicopter around admiring the graphics themselves. Red Zone is a truly mesmerizing, eye-catching experience. Soul Calibur on the Sega Dreamcast. While the Sega Dreamcast was my first Sega console, it wasn't my first experience with 3D fighting games. Titles like Battle Arena Toshinden and Ergeiz on the PlayStation were average at best, but it was Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast which was a visual marvel. Showcasing some of the best 3D graphics available for its time, each fighter controlled well and the game ran at a cool 60 frames per second pushing out arcade-like goodness thanks to the Naomi-infused hardware in the Dreamcast. As a 
sequel to Soul Edge, Soul Calibur, a weapons-based fighting game, was originally developed under Namco's System 12 arcade hardware, with all stages fully rendered in 3D along with the characters. Because of the advanced hardware in the Dreamcast, this version of the game was able to improve the graphics over the arcade counterpart, as well as the addition of new modes like a training mode, missions, survival, and team battle. Hailed as one of the greatest ports ever, Soul Calibur absolutely delivers. Nightmare was seriously wounded, but the soul still burns. Ivy wins! Vector Man on the Sega Genesis. Despite having a love-hate relationship with Vector Man, I can't help but acknowledge how my previously fanboyish attitude affected how I felt towards the franchise. See, I was a huge Donkey Kong Country fan and an avid Nintendo fanboy back in the day. But even back then, I would get angry seeing the Vector Man demo playing on the Sega Genesis in Toys R Us. Pfft. Sega trying to copy Nintendo again. But then I played the game, and wow was I wrong. Sure, Sega tried to use advanced graphical techniques to fake 3D rendered sprites, but what really amazed me was how Vector Man himself moved. He's called an Orba, who's armed with a gun arm. His body and cannon can morph into different weapons depending on which power-ups you grab. The way that Vector Man moved can be attributed to a graphical technique called Vector Piece Animation, which allowed singular sprites to move move in unison while remaining unconnected to each other. It's really impressive stuff. This was one of the most underappreciated Sega franchises that really deserved a third title. Sadly, it was cancelled during development. But this game was one of the titles that really helped me break out of my fanboyish attitudes years later. There are way more than five games, but these were five that I really found that came to mind very quickly for me that I thought were very impressive technically. And now I wanna know what are games that you found very technically impressive on Sega consoles specifically. Leave a comment down below. And if you like mine, tell me what you thought about my picks in the comments down below if you like those games or if you've never heard of them or anything like that. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, make sure to, if you, if you can, like the video. Uh, or if you have really hard opinions on things, uh, hit that dislike button. And also, if you can hit that subscribe button with that little bell right there, you can do that so that way you make sure that you watch all videos. When they pop up, you'll get notifications for my channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you very soon with a new video. Soul still burns. Nightmare wins. Yami, you. Wari no motoni.